All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another fun and exciting episode. With me today, as always, is Matt Amos and Mr. Chet Sears. And today we're going to talk about what's on Matt's mind. And he like got us prepared at the end of last week's episode, so I'm pretty excited. Is that this first. one that you're going to... You're yep. talking about? Yeah, he's bringing the thunder. So, look out. Put your headgear on. He's taking the gloves off. I sure hope he hasn't oversold this. <laughs> right. And then uh, I'm hosting, and Chet is going to follow it up with a good word. And we're eating nuts and Hostess donuts today. So, here we go. Matt, what's on your mind? What's our top three today? Just so I can... Oh, sorry. I, I did leave that out. Top three foods that you cannot... Stand. Oh, perfect. Okay. You guys could probably already. I can already say chest top three. Mushrooms, olives, and something else. <laughs> Pretty much. Just guessing. <laughs> All uh, right. What's on your mind? Control. Is this, are you talking about the U.S. government? Yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about that song. Isn't there a song called Control? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but there's one that says relax, don't do it, something, your body into it. I don't remember. When you want to go to it. I don't know. I don't know. But when anyway. When you want to go. <laughs> so we've kind of been through the, the, the phases of riots. We've been through. It's a Janet Jackson song. I'm not going to play it for you, but yeah. Copyright. We'd, we'd need to whatever by rights but we've been through the <laughs> the riot phase that led into the coronavirus phase that has now led us into what the control phase it's all been a control phase oh, inflation oh, inflation okay. Let's, i'll take inflation for 200 alex <laughs> in, in, bad, <laughs> bad economy bad economy inflation we're going to even uh, with even with our if you voted for Donald Trump, you're a terrorist. Yes. And for one thousand Alex. True. But there's one other one in there too that we're that we're that we're just skipping over. It's not essential. We've given you three answers, man. Come on. It's not essential, but that's that's one of them, right? But we're gonna we're gonna pay off uh student loans. Oh. So if not, you not, not necessarily pay them off, just pay portions. Ten to twenty thousand. I didn't even get a piece of that. We still have school loans. What the heck? Did you not apply for it? I don't think so. Did you have to apply for it? I don't know. I was under the assumption that you didn't have to apply. I guess if it's anything like PPP loans that you would have to apply. I, I'm, well, I'm, this is a lot different than PPP loans. I'm, all I know is this, this is illegal. <laughs> he doesn't have the authority to do it. But maybe maybe that's why, because right. it, it, it it's going to get challenged. I'm not down with PPP. I would assume. Or OPP. So, I've been... Yeah, you know me. Help it out. Help us out, Matt. Come on. Get this guy to be quiet. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> control, control him. As you look like you're snorting coke with your white powder all over your lips. Guy, he's out of control. You're like that. You got any more of them? Uh, you're like that Miami Vice guy. Is that? What is that? Oh, yeah, that's coke. <laughs> but, uh, you know... It, and I know we've we've talked about this a little bit off, off the podcast or offline, however you want to say it, um, about how Russell Brand is is kind of almost it, it, controversial. I, I, no, I, I don't. He's not controversial. He's he's common sense. The, now, now, and he will tell you he hasn't always been. And he's yeah, and he says he's always learning. Mm -hmm. You know, and he says he's always correcting. You know things that he's done in the past and he, he gets new information and makes new decisions based on new information. I would say people that don't like what he's saying would say he's very controversial. There, yeah, there'll probably be right. some people that say that, but I mean, not me, but, but I've been listening to him a little bit and seeing what he has to say. And it, and it's kind of funny to see somebody that to me seems like he's right in the middle. Like he, he's trashing the left which he, he says that he identifies more with the left or he used to than he did the right. But he'll attack the right just as much. And yeah. he's, he's like, this is where this is wrong. This is where this is wrong. And he's pretty much. So he's like, he's like uh, the modern era Walter Cronkite. 
just is that what you're trying to say, Matt? No, I'm saying like he's a good news source because he uses factual sources to get his news and he he works hard to get that. And he doesn't appear to have bias. And if he does, he admits it. He admits that he has bias and he says, I'm I'm probably partially biased to this and this is why. But he states the facts and states the truth. And the one thing that he kind of pointed out in, in one of his episodes, and I can't remember which one it was, but he was talking about, uh, he was talking about control. And so I, I just started thinking back uh, because he was talking about the coronavirus just pretty much specifically and how that was just a, a method for the government to gain more control. And I look back and it's like, well, how do, how does the government get more control? So if you look at the riots before coronavirus, because the government always needs some sort of con- controversy. And that, that the riots were, were one of them. They were, they were kind of fanning the flame. Like they weren't doing anything about them. They the were just George Floyd stuff. Yeah. You, you know, or, or black lives matter or any of that stuff where, well, they, were, George Floyd, yeah. where they were burning buildings or whatever. And they mm-hmm. really, they weren't really doing anything about it. And so now you've got this side just kind of running wild. And then you've got, you've got the, the conservative side mostly saying, well, we need, we need laws, you know, to, to prevent that, or we need to stop doing that or whatever. So you've got one side pitted against another and this side's willing to give up some freedoms in order for this side to get punished. Because now it's like, I don't like this person. I don't like this group. They need to be punished. And so I'm going to agree to more regulation. I'm going to agree to more control in order to punish this side. Those started to die down all of a sudden, or they, they said, it's getting too crazy, but we still need to salvage this opportunity. So coronavirus was a real thing. The coronavirus is real. But as we've learned, lockdowns didn't matter. Face masks, masks didn't matter. Vaccines don't matter. But what they've done during that whole period of coronavirus is if you're not going to wear a mask, you hate your fellow man. Oh, now if you if you don't get a vaccine, if you don't get a you vaccine, you want your grandma to die. Then you hate this person. So now you've got the left, mostly, who says, "I'm going to get vaccinated, and if you don't get this for for the betterment of the humankind, then then you're you hate everybody, and I don't <laughs> like you, and I'm not going to put up with you, and I'm not going to deal with you. I'm not going to go to your, I'm not going to go to your house. I don't want to be around you, whatever. So they've pitted one group against the other. And they've said, they've called for, we need more regulation to get these people. We've got to mandate masks. We've got to mandate vaccinations. We've got to do this. And then they're willing to give up more rights so that we conform to whatever they're saying. Ultimately doing what in both those situations from the riots to the coronavirus, giving the government more control. Move over to the economy gun control. And all of a sudden we've got some school shootings. Now that the coronavirus is over the school shootings, almost on a T boom, right back. So coronavirus is winding down. We're going to have a school shooting. Well, now we need gun control. So now you got a bunch of people calling for gun control. Another portion of the society saying, no, we don't need more gun laws because they don't work. Pitting one side against the other saying, Hey, I don't like these people. We need to control these guns. I'm willing to give up more, uh, more of my rights so that we can control this group of people that owns firearms pitting one group against the other. It's, and if you keep, if you continue to look, that's how politics have run for the last 10, 10 years. And now even more so since the, what are we up to now? The virus is over. Now we're going to, um, Look at now they're looking at school loans and saying, okay, we're going to, we're going to partially pay these off. So now you've got a portion of the society, completely different sector of society, not necessarily just left versus right, because there's plenty of conservatives that have school loans that need to be paid off. And nobody wants to talk about the real issue with that, which is predatory lending and schools being overpriced. Why don't we, and interest rates being too high. Why don't we, why don't we look at that instead of trying to pay people off? Like, yeah, well they're they're going after they're going after uh they're trying to get votes, right? I mean that's exactly what they're trying to do. 
but it, it it's not a lending problem. I don't I don't know you don't want to get into a student loan deal, but specifically, but that that's not a lending problem. It's just that people should pay the debts that they get. I, right. I agree that people should you, pay the debts that they get. You signed up for it, you have to pay it off. You signed up for it, you you know, you were stupid to sign up for a loan at, at 8% for whatever and there's no there's really no way out. That's that's dumb. No, it's not not even that there's no way out. There are people that have a way out. You just got to pay it off. And I agree, but that that's a that's a separate discussion because there are some points I disagree with you on that. I I believe that the interest rates and in, they need to be low. I mean, whatever. No. no. Not, not if you're not, you, heck, I was talking to your dad about this. I jokingly said did you, if he got any, asked him if he got any thank you cards from all the student loans that he paid off with his tax dollars. And he's like, no, not a single one yet. They didn't give student loans to people before <laughs> when he was in college because he didn't have any, he didn't have any collateral. Well, no collateral <clears throat> credit. But, but student loans allow you to sign up for that. Right. And, but well, but, then, but then you get a federally backed loan and. If that's that needs Insti to change, institutions raise their prices because the federal government is backing it. Anyway, that's off topic. But you don't come and bail somebody out because they signed on the dot. No, line. I don't think you should bail anybody out at all. But so you move forward, and then you've got so you've got that controversy, which is just between me and you. We have that little disagreement, right? But it's not like I hate Chet and I don't ever want to see him again. On. I mean, but I I, I have that <laughs> daily that I don't want to see you. But so. And, you know, now the FBI raided, raided Trump under the uh, some espionage act or whatever. But ultimately, it's to try to prevent him from running in, in 2024. But it's also a, a, a divisatory, if that's even a word, tactic to. I'll allow it. To pit one side against another. Because now you have your extremist, as we've been called from the from the president itself. And I'm not necessarily a, a you know. MAGA, a, a MAGA person. Right. But a lot of the values that that stands for, I align with for sure. But that doesn't make me Trump's the be all end all. No, he's not. He's far from it. So, but now they've pitted the side that supported Trump, that likes Trump, that says, you know, that's got Trump 2024 on all their stuff and, you know, bring back Trump, all that stuff. Now you're pitting them against everybody else. And it's like, oh, well, now we're now they're labeling those people as extremists, as, as domestic terrorists. And I'm willing to give up some rights because these people are scary and we need to control them. The same way the the unvaxxed or the non-maskers were, were scary and we needed to control them. The same way the the riots, those those people that were riding in the streets were people were, were scary and we needed to control them. So we're willing to give up our rights to control other people because it's all about our own personal security at that point. That's what we're worried about. It's like, I want to feel safe. It's all about me when we need to think about everybody else. And I've said it on the podcast before, you know, and I, you know, we called it coffee and a donut, but we are seriously going to lose this whole thing. If we do not come together to bring down the powers that be as they currently stand. And the only way that that happens is if we completely disregard mainstream media, we completely disregard the, the television because all they're doing on TV is playing political theater. It's all, it's all an act. It's all a show to drive views, to drive perceptions, to put one side against another. Whereas if, if I'm on the street and I'm talking to somebody that that's from the, you, you know, more, more liberal side of things, we can have a great discussion. We can get along and be like, Hey man, you know, I, I don't agree with you on that. Have a good day you know, I'll see you tomorrow, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. And we get along just fine. But in that political arena, it's like this side and this side hate each other. They're always at war. We're, we're, we're fighting this and, and the fight's really not there. It's a made up fight because a lot of the things that, that are, you know, I would say hot button issues, we can come to an agreement on, you know, and, and I look at for myself and take, take abortion as an example. So, you know, we voted on that here in Kansas and, um, the the nose won and you know the the nose and the that it's constant no to abortion the no to a constitutional amendment that yeah. will allow the the state congress to vote on whether or not we should allow abortions that was the no yeah, yeah. thank you for clarifying because there's non-kansans that don't understand yeah. that so there's kansas that didn't understand that too so they probably voted just wrong. to clarify but 
you know, and I look at that and I'm like, okay, we could look at that as a, as a defeat. I really don't look at that as a, as a loss for, for us really, because ultimately what should, what should we be doing? Because we, if, if the government lately has been any example, we should not look to the government to be our ethical leaders. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I, I go look, back I, years. I, I look, I look at, I look more at that, <laughs> that vote as, as, as a challenge to the church to be more involved, to be, to get involved in those, those young women's lives, to help them make the right decisions. And it requires people getting off of a pew, not just reading their Bible and going to church on Sunday and saying, Oh, I'm, you know, I believe and everything's good. Get involved and, and help these help these young women to make the right decisions. Before but don't it act like that, that doesn't point. happen though. And that's and, and that I, was one of the biggest issues that happened during the vote is there were church goers that assumed that the the church doesn't do anything with crisis pregnancy centers or adoption and, or whatever else. But there is no other people group in this state that does more to adopt kids or to provide health care to women who are pregnant. And who have had babies and in I, tough situations. Don't so don't don't pick up no, their no, no. line and act like Christians don't do that. There, saying, there, there's no other group that does it more. And I'm saying I look at that as a challenge to do even more. Right? I'm not saying that they don't do anything. You got a little defensive there. I did because you're, you're, you're sounding like you're towing the line of the the liberal Christian that nope. voted to say that that women should be getting abortions. No, absolutely not. That's but that's I'm, what they I'm, were saying. Well, the I'm church saying, doesn't do enough. And I don't think some of them do. I really don't. So, okay. So let's let women kill their babies. I'm saying the church needs to do more so that we can prevent that, get involved more. I, I completely it, agree that the church needs to do more, but the problem, there's problem with our, with the American church in general. Well, and that's, but that's, that's kind of where that, I'm that's getting. the it's, biggest problem. It, it, and it's, it, that's, but I'm looking at that at, through a lens of society as a whole. Right. Right. Because it's, it, we're going to rely on, on government to make these mandates to, to say we can or can't do things. Whereas we need to talk to each other and, and govern that more locally, whether that's the church who needs to be an influencer inside I'm telling that you community. Though, I, I can, you can say that they need to do more, but to say that the church loving people more providing more. So I, 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 there's not a, there's not people lined up outside of these crisis pregnancy centers where we need to open more of them. I, I, I'm, I hear what you're saying, but it's not you're, like if, if, you, if we open 15 you, you, more of those and we, we listen, have 1,700 more kids adopted you, this you, year. You, you cherry picked, you, you're cherry picking one, one bit of information I, it, that you said, but you're cherry picking it, right? Because it's overall the discussion about letting the government dictate. And, the, and, and and we're following that. I'm we're just gonna trying say to yes say the no. church doing more is mutually exclusive from the government doing what they're doing. I, I would if say the church does more doesn't mean the government's going to stop. If we're talking about people, the people need to do more, period. It, right. Take it out of but the that, church. But that's like people on the left that's what and I'm the saying. right both need to do more away from their stupid government that's trying to control them. Stop trying to tell the government, hey, we need this, we need that. Right. And giving that power to the government, take that power back and do it yourself. People in the church, people that's, out of the church, both need the, to come together. The, exactly. The abortion thing was a. Right. Well, I don't know how to how to the correct word for it, but that was kind of an example, I guess. Well, you of, cherry of pick what, the uh, abortion example, which is. Well, I put it out there because it's easy. It's a yes, no type of thing. And it's, Hey, we can do more. I, I'll tell you right now, without the liberal church goer voting the way they did, that bill would have passed. So I say the church need to do less in that case. They need to quit these, these crazy well, liberal then, Christians shouldn't have voted in that. But then that comes back to last week's good word, which was watch out because they, they're reading it. You know, they, they're reading their own version or their own truth that they want to bring out in the word. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. So not, not the word as it, as it is it, as it's red and black and white where no, I, I'm with you. So, and i so that's, that's what I'm saying is, is get back to, I guess, a more localized form of government the way it should be. Small government, not big government, dictating everything. That's not going to happen. All, <laughs> Here you know, we are. Here but, we are again. But, but folks. see that? But that's your cop out because it, it's I, not and, a cop out. And and I, 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 but you say it every time, and so it's. 
and I'm, I, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm right but, all the time. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm saying that it, it's worth a shot, right? Because here's the, here's the solution. Stop attacking each other and trying to say, hey, government, you know, stop these people or, hey, government, you know, those people need less rights. I need more rights. And let's look at it from we all deserve the same rights. So stop trying to give the government all that control because you're just you're giving it up. And what you give up today because you think it benefits you and, and, and screws that group is so, going to come back tomorrow and screw you. And that group's going to get. I'm going to say what you're saying in a more inflammatory way. Donald Trump is not going to make it better. No. I agree. Do no. not support Donald Trump because you think he is going to fix the problem that Matt is talking about. Because he is not. No. and No it, individual will. Yeah, and no individual politician will do it. It's going to take us as individuals communicating with each other, being more informed, and actually having discussions instead of just saying, oh, well, I, I elected that guy to make those decisions. He knows what's best for me because I, I voted for him and I, I saw his campaign and he's got a he's got a good smile and, you know, he, he, he did this or he did that, you know. So it comes back down to taking responsibility, responsibility for your life, accountability, including your student loans, all of it. And I, I 100 percent agree with that. Yeah. I don't think we should be paying those off for people. I mean, for that matter, my uh, my tools, I want I want money back for my tools for all my construction tools that I had to buy when I didn't have the money. Yeah. You know, so I get it. I, I just think uh, there's a couple of things that I saw. We, we talked about the abortion deal, but the, even, even the, the group of people that are like, where's the compassion for all the, we should be celebrating with the people that are getting, you know, $20,000 towards their student loans. I, I look at that in a completely different way. You're, you're telling me, you're telling uh, somebody that is high school ed- or not even high school educated, they have a job and they pay taxes. You're telling them that if their tax dollars do not go to pay for these student loans, if you, you're like, oh, I disagree with this, I'm going to stop paying my taxes. Well, those somebody will show up to their house with a gun. With their, well, 87,000 new IRS agents. And say, you're going to go to jail. If you don't pay. If you don't pay. And, it, and if you refuse, then you're dead. Like, so you, you, there's no compassion in enforcing people to pay taxes and then having their tax dollars go to buy votes. Like that is the opposite of compassion. That is, and, and, and to hear a lot of people on the religious left, the, whatever you want to call that group that's out there now, like condemn people for being upset about this and like, Oh, you don't have compassion. Well, what's, what's compassionate about? I'm going to kill you if you don't do this like that. That's not compassion. No. And I know that's an extreme view, but you don't do what the government tells you to do. You you either go to jail or you die. And or we, both. We could talk about <laughs> go to jail and die. You suicide yourself. I mean, we could talk about, you know, some instances where some government agencies that have three letters showed up because there was a minor infraction of a firearms deal or a question that we needed to ask about the parts you've been ordering and getting delivered to your compound and next thing you know women and children are dead well and that's that's how the government works well in another one of those cases not all the cases not all cases by the way this is troy talking right now (laughs) (laughs) troy edwards there you go whoever that is so and and I and I agree, and I, I saw that too, where the uh, it, it came out that the FBI was actually suppressing the uh, the Hunter Biden um, laptop deal. So here you've got a non elected um, agency or non elected person influencing an election, which is illegal. You want to you want to take bets on uh, what happens to that guy? Who Hunter Biden? No, <coughs> the FBI agent that suppressed the story. Oh. Nothing. <coughs> Nothing. He's probably going to run for president 2024. Uh, not only that, did you know that the FBI went to Zuckerberg at Facebook and said, hey, don't let this Hunter Biden store that's, run that's on what I, That's exactly what I'm talking about. No, no, no. There, There's actual suppression the, of the FBI guy in charge that said, FBI agents, you can't do anything. Like there was that. That's what that guy did. And then some other powers that be 
went to the social media companies and said, you can't let this story run on social media. And they were like, okay, we won't let it. Yeah. And, and, and well, and it came out that he, they've actually worked together on a lot more stuff like suppress this story. Don't suppress that story. Do this, do that. So they're influencing society. They're influencing elections. Well, and then Zuckerberg, they let it run, but they put like, didn't they put things on? Cause he, after the election, after the, then they could put things on like this could be fake news or whatever. They're little, they throttled it. Yeah. He admitted that they throttled the story. Like you could share a picture of your kids and it would show up to 100% of your friend's feed and Facebook. If you shared the Hunter Biden story, it may go to one. Uh, no, nobody would see it. Right. Yeah. But you're over here like, oh, I shared it. I'm, I'm doing my patriotic duty to share this yeah, right. article. And why did nobody like it? Yeah. Because nobody saw it. Because nobody saw it. And by the way, if you're getting your news from Facebook shares from your friends, you're already gone. It's too late. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, and so it was kind of funny because I was watching, you know, Russell Brand actually talk about that FBI deal, you know, and he's like, is it just a, is it just a plot to prevent Trump from running in 2024? And then he kind of gave his little at the end, you know, and then he goes into talking about it and, and literally, literally spells it out, you know, Hey, we're going to suppress this. Hey, run this, you know, get this out there. Don't put this out there. And he's actually slamming them for interfering in the election and he's admittedly not a trump supporter but he's like what they're doing is is absolutely wrong you know and so and it and it kind of came back to and that's where i kind of closed it out was we just we have to come together and stop listening and watching the political theater that they're that they're putting on because that's not how day-to-day -day life is and get things back start getting involved with your your school boards like like you have chet get involved with the school boards let them know that that behavior during the coronavirus isn't acceptable and that you're not going to accept that and if that needs to be changed get those people changed out with with people who you trust who can actually do that job and and do it with some common sense and get on you know get to know your your local uh your your city commission you know your city council your 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 mayor. county com your county commissions your your mayors get to know these people because that, those are the ones who are going to directly be able to affect you the most and influence those spots, you know, just like we've done in, uh, in Reno County. Now, of course that was, uh, more involved with, um, wind turbines and, and industrial wind energy, you know, but I mean, we got people voted out. We got people put in place that, that aligned more with the county's views rather than, a multi-billion multinational corporation coming in and saying, Hey, Oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And you got people that buy it. They don't do their research. They just take it at face value because it aligns more with their agenda than it does actually with the people in the County. And so we replaced those people with people that, that aligned more with, with our views and, and agreed with us. And then, you know, fortunately we were able to get, you know, wind energy banned in our portion of the County. And now they've got a, an overlay for the rest of the county and zoning to make sure that everything goes properly. And that's, that's how it starts. And it's, it's going to be slow. It's not an overnight, you know, it's definitely not going to be an overnight process. Well, at all. it's not, we're not going to win for lack of a better no, word, unless no. people are doing what you ask them to do right now. Right. And because it's the, not a popularity contest. There's no. not one person you're going to elect that's going to fix it. It's going to take some hard work and it's going to start it's, from the local level. And it's going to have to, it's going to take a lot of people and it's going to take everybody being involved and stop with the, the name calling and trying to control another person just because you may have a different belief. We live in a society of, of tons of beliefs and let's, let's meet in the middle, try to form a, that more perfect union and just get along with each other because it's, it's, incredibly easy to do for the most part. I mean, there are some people out there just like, I can't, I'm not, no, I can't deal with that person. Yeah. But there's somebody else that you know that thinks like you do that can deal with that person and enjoy having conversation with that person and, and stuff. So to me, it just comes down to being more involved locally with each other and then work from the ground up because you're not going to fix it from the top. Nobody down. else is going to solve your problems. No whether there's a D or an R behind their name. No, it's going to take... you heard me say that before? Quite a few times. Yeah, you weren't listening. Oh. You've said it quite a few times. Mm -hmm. 
but it's, it's one of those things that we just, we have to do. But anyway, that's what's been on my mind. All right. Well, now I need gonna, a break. Now Definitely. we're going to talk about things we can't stand. Yeah. I'm going to move right into oh. foods I hate. <laughs> Are we going to do foods we hate or past political people in office? No, let's stay with, with us. And let, we'll <laughs> let's stick with the foods. <laughs> At Admiral's Pennant, our mission is to offer the latest and refined, high-quality masculine products and services to the modern gentleman, as well as provide him with the tools and products necessary to look, act, and feel confident in his appearance and social interactions. Check it out at admiralspennant.com. Without it, you might as well shave. I do need to apologize for the crunching earlier. I was just informed on our break that I crunched in the microphone. I was just trying to get a rise out of Matt. To all of our fans afflicted with misophonia. Yeah, we apologize. We apologize. All right, if so we're gonna get. Here, they probably. Yeah, they probably out. tuned. Oh, they probably tuned out. Yeah, or they might. The next time, if you hear crunching, just hit the little thirty second skip button. Oh, okay. Go right through it. You want to test them? No, I'm kidding. No. All right, so top I three. I feel like foods. some of my best material though was was right when you were crunching. Like I was really building up, and then you just psh, they're gone. Yeah. Now they lost it. Oh well. He they was about en- to announce his run for the presidency. They enjoyed chat yelling at you i'm sure all right top three <laughs> foods you can't stand we're gonna start with chet what you got number three mushrooms figure yep. i mean we I, I think i called that at the beginning you called that earlier yeah can't stand them number one olives olives worse than mushrooms called that one number i know number two number two what is it tomatoes nope Oh, really? No, I'll even eat a tomato every now and then to see if it's good. So you can have a good tomato every now and then. Skim milk. Mm. Ah. I don't even know why it exists. Like, why? It's a little watery. Little? It's a little watery. 2% is a little watery. Skim milk is murky water. It's yeah, gross. Like, wh- why, why is it even made? Like, I don't know if Wh- I could it drink it. What's it used for? I don't even know if I could drink it. If you put a glass of skim milk in front of me right now, I don't know. I probably would gag I, trying I, to I drink it. I think I could do it in a like a bowl of cereal. No. But that's like worst case. Yeah. Cereal it's... milk's got to be like thick. Yeah. Vitamin D should be the only milk out there ever. Like that's how it should be. I would Brom. agree. Brom, and I don't even. Brom's vitamin D is awesome. I don't even like milk. Anyway, but I don't hate it. I can, I can stand it, so it's not on my list. I've got a uh, I've got an honorable mention. All right, hold those. I'll Let's not next. forget. Let's not forget. All right, my number three. Since I really like a lot of things, I couldn't really come up with three that I didn't couldn't stand. So my number three is just bland food. Period. Just anything bland, made without seasoning, without any spices. Dude, get that out of my face. Just a piece of boiled chicken set on your plate? Yeah, get that out of here. You said boiled chicken? Boiled chicken. Where are you from, boy? From hey, boy. Boy. <laughs> That's a boiled chicken. Boiled chicken. Uh, number two. That's a country boy right there. Cucumbers. I I used to be there with you until recently. Really? I can tolerate them, but I don't really like them. Your sister doesn't like them either. Oh. At, at all. I thought of number three. Does she like I just thought cucumbers? of number three. Coconut? No. Celery, celery. That's a better. Than I hate food. celery. That she's in the same boat. You, I don't like it you, crunchy. I don't like it. You don't like it in your gumbo. I think. No. I think that's the way you were. You were both raised right I'll, now, because probably I'll eat it in gumbo just because I love gumbo so much. What about ants on a log? Yes, ants on a log. Oh man, that's celery, and then you put peanut, peanut, peanut butter, butter down the channel with raisins. And then you put raisins oh. on that. No, disgusting. Celery and peanut butter is fantastic. I mean, I could probably muscle that down, but I'm not a fan of raisins either. Gosh, I should have put that on my list. I don't like raisins either. Sorry. You could stand them. I don't eat them though. I don't. I barely like grapes. Barely. Dude, this guy. What did he say to start this off with? I like just about everything. (laughs) I don't. There's not too much I won't eat. Yeah. (laughs) Cucumbers Uh, and celery. What about uh, cucumbers and water? Is it the flavor? Is it a texture? It's it's the flavor. I'm just not a fan of it. See, I really didn't like cucumbers by themselves until I had like a cucumber water instead of lemon. And I was like, wow, this is really good. It's refreshing. And cucumber then, water's not bad. And so, and then I was like, I got that flavor. And then I started eating cucumbers. I'm like, oh, these aren't bad. I actually kind of like them now. I love pickles, though. 
Yeah. Pickled pu- you like pickled, pickled cucumbers? cucumbers? Yeah, that's that's what a pickle is. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. All right, number one, black licorice is disgusting. Get it out of here. I used to only like that in in a liquor. Yeah, I don't don't like it. What liquor does it go into? Jägermeister is kind of a black licorice flavor. Nobody likes a Jägermeister. Oh, I used to. You just say you do because had, you want to get it, drunk. Because it had a deer on the bottle. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> Tastes like deer urine. It it, it does. Yeah, <laughs> I've never had it. Deer urine. I've had tons of it in my life, and yeah, deer like, urine. No, <laughs> Jägermeister. Oh. <laughs> and it's not. Yeah. Jäger bombs. Jäger bombs. Yeah, Red Bull and Jäger Meister. That's how long has Red Bull been around? I don't remember it when I was younger. It gives you wings. <laughs> uh, probably high school, so late nineties. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna get. Let's guess. He's looking it up. What year you think? I'm gonna say. Actually, I'm gonna say uh, ni- two. I'm gonna say two thousand two. I was gonna say two thousand one. Two thousand. Right around. Actually, there. I'm gonna go ninety nine. Ninety nine. <laughs> Trying to think because I worked for Budweiser in like two thousand five or six. Oh my gosh! Oh, it goes way back. How far? Suspense is killing. The me. original Red Bull drink was developed in nineteen sixty two. Oh no, sir! When did it become mainstream? <laughs> because when did they go commercial? Because it's probably illegal. When. When so that was the the drink of the Red Bull. So the company Red Bull was founded in 1987. Wow, I had no idea. I was eight years old. I was seven. Chet was forty-eight. 40. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. All right, Matt. What are your Red, top? Three? Red Bull had sponsorship in Formula One cars in 1995. Don't believe it. It's fake not, news. Not 95, I can believe it. The the first Red Bull flu tog, flug tog, where they watch fly your language. The <laughs> Is that where they fly the planes? Or? Yeah. <laughs> that was in 1992. Hmm. Red Bull, the first ever Red Bull event um, was athletes running against mountains. A mountain run? 1988. This episode Dude. sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> Get your Red Bull at your local QT. All right. We were smarter back then. We didn't. Hey, uh, real quick, QT versus uh, Quick Shop. Where are you going? Quick Shop. What? I used to be Quick Shop until Dylan's. Till Dylan episode. sold it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, every time somebody sells something, it goes to crap. Yeah. Hell on a handbasket right away. Regal from Disney. the Warren. Disney. Or sorry. Lucasfilm. Yeah. Crap. So the Warren's no longer any good? Oh, dude, it's trash, it's dude. Bad. Is it? Even the parking lot sucks. I like, thought I was I thought I was going they I haven't I passed thought, a pothole since they signed the papers on that thing. I thought I walked through a wormhole and was in the old Bozier theater. It's bad. It's horrible. Hmm. Everything. Like the So we don't even have a good theater left in Wichita. No. 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 Don't I, say the AMC. The AMC sucks. The AMC AMC does suck. You're comparing it to the Sucky Regal, and it's like, oh, it's better than the Sucky <laughs> Regal. Well, it still sucks. Yeah. Man, because the, the war- one thing I like about the AMC is the seats and the small theaters. So there's not a lot of people in there. Still a big screen. It's nice. But the food sucks. I think I've already harped on the Coke dispenser. Good yeah. gracious, this thing's got to go. Because I was looking forward, you know, I mean, that used to be the place to, to go when the Warren first opened. I mean, it was nice. It was nice up until Bill Warren sold it. Food was great. Yeah, popcorn. you always knew when he was there because he was wearing like his the, glo- They were all wearing their white gloves. Right? Pop, popcorn was bad. Like they went, their pop, Bill Warren popcorn was awesome. And then like Regal moved right in there and sucked right away. Hmm. Yeah. Like before the place got dirty. Man, and they took away all this like seasoning stuff you could sprinkle on the oh, good yeah. Bill Warren popcorn. Man, I'm glad I didn't go because I was really, I finally watched uh, Top Gun Maverick. And I was like, man, this would have been so awesome to actually watch in the theater. And I thought about going and watching the theater, but that violates my going out in public with people. But now I'm glad I didn't waste my time. You need to go to a matinee at the AMC. It's not that bad. Mm. All right. Where where were we? Uh, my top three. Matt's top oh, okay. three. 
just in case uh, it's food you can't stand, just in case our audience forgot what yeah. we're talking about. <laughs> uh, number three, and this might surprise some people, mule deer. I do not like mule deer. Mule deer that's eating sage. Yeah, I, I, I have not had a good mule deer. I don't know if I've ever had mule deer. I, I've had a couple, and I just I have no reason to hunt them because I will not eat them. They taste different than a whitetail, I'm guessing. This is based on what they eat. Yeah. Oh, okay. And most of the places that they're going to eat, that's where they're they're eating sage. You know, unless you're Western Kansas and they had a good year. Yeah. You know, but I had the mule deer that I had. We you know we brought it home and I you know processed it and packaged it up and and I knew 100 percent when my wife would cook with it. I could smell it. It smelled different. And when I ate it, it just left this taste that <laughs> I, and I told her, she was like, well, I don't, she goes, I don't mind it. I, you know, I think it's fine. And I was like, well, you can fix this when I'm gone. And then let's, you can get through all of that when I'm gone. And then you will not feed this to me when I'm home, we can eat the good stuff, <laughs> you know, but I just, yeah, I did not like it. Uh, number two, <clears throat> Water chestnuts. Cannot stand them. What if they're roasting mm-hmm. on an open fire? No, not even then. <laughs> not even then. And it's, <clears throat> I can't stand the flavor. It's one, the, You don't like the texture either, the crunch. I don't like the texture. But it goes back to what I talked about, I think it was last week, where, you know, I was talking about, uh, what was that, burple or whatever it was that just, <laughs> you, I had it and then it just gave me a headache. Water chestnuts is one of those that just, it's a flavor that just gives me a headache. I don't know why. You got to be careful when you order Chinese food then, right? Uh, yeah, I can find them and pick them out. Yeah. And then. Uh, that is one good thing about water chestnuts. If they touch something else. They don't leave a residue to like, like olives. Like olives do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if. If a water chestnut did that, I would not. I, I would feel the way that you do about ordering a pizza with olives. Yeah. Then I'm going to order And stuff. then you would order stuff with water chestnuts. I'm going to order pizza with water chestnuts on it just for you, man. <laughs> Good luck finding that. Uh, and number one is any meat or salad that's got fruit on it. Any what? meat with fruit on it? So if you've got like a... Have you never had like a fresh, ice cold ice lettuce, strawberry summer salad? Absolutely not gross. Oh, those are you, delicious, no. dude! Fruits and vegetables it's go a southern separate. Thing. Meat and fruit, it's good though, goes oh, separate. So if you've got like a, you know, if you've got like a pork loin with some type of, I don't know even what it's called. I, I forget the name of whatever jelly or sauce that they put over the top that's made of cranberry what about cran- ap- what about cranberry or- sauce over uh over turkey no man you're messed up in the head no <laughs> i can't do it i can't what do about it. what about fruit salad if it's all fruit then that's fine throw some pepperoni in there with it no <laughs> Throw some mule deer in there yeah. with it. So <laughs> a little hint and, of sage. And I've and I've had this, and I know that there are people like me out there that just don't like that mix of, of things. They don't like sweet on their salad. They don't like sweet on their meat. And I'm the same way. I don't like any of that stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't like a sweet barbecue sauce or anything that's sweet that goes with meat. That should be salty. That that's kind of my. What about that? Uh, that what about hot hot fruit? What? Like a hot fruit, like a fruit that's been cooked. There's that uh, those, oh. those hot pears with uh, pecans and mayonnaise. I'm not a big hot fruit fan, so I like no, it in cobbler. I don't. No, I don't like. I don't like apple pie. I don't like any. I just don't like that kind of stuff. The only one that I would do like that would be pumpkin pie. What about pineapple on your pizza? Oh, absolutely not. That's gross. That's uh, that, that violates. <laughs> Everything. I mean, that would have been my number one, but that would have been the only thing. So I had to do the all encompassing. But there, and there are people with like me out there. Trust me. There's, there's more of us. Oh, there's, think, there's a movement against pineapple on pizza. I just don't get it. I no, it's but good. not but, fruit on a salad. Yeah, not fruit on a salad. Fruit so, on fruit and meat together. I, uh, I think you have an argument there on no, I'm something. Good. I, I want, I want fruit and meat. 
I mean, I'm like fine with it either way. See, I don't even like a, like a like a Waldorf salad that's got the apples and and the raisins or craisins on it. Nope. My whole deal is if it, if it's cold, it's good. No. Yeah, if it's nope. all cold, for sure. Can't. Especially with candy. Is this tomato or fruit? Yes. So you don't want tomatoes in your salad? I typically don't. No. You don't want you don't want uh, marinara sauce in your uh, spaghetti. See, I can do the marinara sauce. Okay. So a form of tomato. Yeah, processed, but yeah, I ugh, it just I don't know what it is. It just it, it grosses me out. Oh, uh, all right, okay. That's that's oh, uh, uh, honor- oh I, so I so honorable I will mentions. say honorable mentions. Yes, sorry. I I did put up with one. I was eating it at a buddy's house, and he made these beautiful steaks. I mean, just tenderloin, just perfect, mm-hmm. wrapped with bacon, cooked to perfection. And his family served a salad. And I was like, oh, this is a nice salad here in California. And, oh, it's got tomatoes. I'll, I can, tomatoes I'm a little bit more lenient with. But I'm eating the salad. And I get, you know, I'm like, oh, well, I'll put a big piece of tomato on this. And got the lettuce and got the dressing, which was like, a, and I don't even like the fruity mm-hmm. dressings at all. You know, it's got to be ranch or Caesar or Italian. Something like that. So I take a big bite. Russian, French, you know. All, all this. All the country. French dressing. All yeah, the country dressing. That's a little too sweet. But took that, got that tomato on there and got that piece of lettuce and stuck it in my mouth. Watermelon. Not tomatoes. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not for that. I... <laughs> Nearly I was like, oh, this is uh, <laughs> this is watermelon, huh? Yeah, okay. And politely ate it, but it's not. Yeah. Oh my goodness, not my thing, at all. <laughs> watermelon doesn't compliment much. Oh, that's good. All right, good top threes, sort of. Chet, <laughs> good word. All your heart. Day thirty-seven. I mean, it comes out of Matthew twenty-two, and this is getting into when. Um, they were uh, trying to test Jesus into saying, what's the greatest commandment? And his response was, love the Lord with all your heart, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Uh, and uh, up until this point, you could say that that Jesus wasn't necessarily hated, that, that people were like, you know, there's some people that, especially from his hometown, that, you know, they tried to push him off a cliff at one point, but... <laughs> On his ministry, they're just like, eh, yeah, whatever. He's another guy. There's some miracles. There have been miracles, you know, whatever. But when they're trying to probe and see if he's a threat or not, and he's, they're like, okay, give us the, you know, what, what's the, what's the greatest command? We're gonna kind of trap him here. And he's like, oh, it's love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul, all your soul and all your mind. Then you know, love your neighbor as yourself is the second greatest commandment, right? Is what what they said. But they clearly uh, drew. He drew a line because up until this point. It's like, you know, do whatever you want to do for status for, you know, if you look at the Pharisees, right? I want to be proud of how I pray and I'm going to, you know, make a big deal about it because I'm pointing towards myself, which selfishness, they love themselves very, very much so. And all of a sudden he's like, well, the greatest commandment is that you don't love yourself like you do. Your greatest commandment is that you love God with everything that you've got, which means all of your focus on why you do this religion in the first place to elevate yourself is the wrong way to go. We want everything from that. Um, so the other thing about this is it really encompassed the law. So it kind of takes, gets rid of all the different little rules that they had. Well, you, you know, you, you can't work on a, on the Sabbath day. What, what does that mean? Well, you can't walk more than this far and you can't lift more than this much weight and you can't help your neighbor if it's this and if your ox gets in a ditch, then that. And can't spit on the ground. It's they had tilling. They all, all these, these laws and they're like, okay, well, which is the greatest commandment? And he's like, this is it. Love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And love everybody else too. Like all, all of a sudden... They were like, okay, this this teaching has to stop. Like, we're not good with this anymore because it's pointing out their control, right? If I, I have all the rules, if I make the list of the rules to tell people what's right and what's wrong, 
I lose control of that. Number two, it's also pointing to me loving myself is not in there. It's not one of the commandments, not the greatest commandment at all. It wasn't mentioned, but loving your neighbor was, which they also weren't too fond of at that time. So all your heart, everything you've got, not just enough to satisfy the rules or to make yourself look good in front of everybody else. And to the point that if it's less than that, then you're falling short. It's like, <clears throat> oh, I tried real hard, but I just couldn't love him. Oh, no participation trophy here. Give it all, all your heart to him. That's the greatest commandment. Matthew 22, verse 37. Yep. And imagine that those two would fix everything I talked about. Yep. So easy. Yet so hard. We wouldn't need a government at all. We we wouldn't. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.